In this video, we're going to talk about inscribed angles. So to start off, we have a circle with center O, and then what we're going to do is add some points along the outside. So point A, point B, and point C. Then we can draw some chords between the points, and a chord is simply a line segment that connects two points along the circumference of a circle. So actually, I can label that here. This is a chord. And when two chords share an endpoint, in this case B, they form an angle, alpha. And this angle here is our inscribed angle. OK. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of this to red. Now we can draw a central angle from A to O and O to C, and a central angle which we'll label as beta. A central angle is any angle in a circle whose vertex is the center of that circle. So for us, that center is L. The last thing we want to label here is this arc that is between our two points. And this arc is called the intercepted arc. OK, and actually, I also want to change beta to blue. So now we can talk a little bit about what makes inscribed angles so interesting. And that is the fact that alpha is equal to one half of beta. And if we just take these lines here, copy them, and pull them down, we can we can eyeball that this is basically half of beta. It's not a super mathematical way to go about it. But um, yeah, it looks about right. So that's the first interesting thing. Delete that. And we can rewrite this as, actually rewrite it as 2 alpha is equal to beta. So a different way of thinking about it. Um, another interesting, interesting thing is that it doesn't really matter where you put this point B. So actually, let's add another point. Let's say this is point B. And we'll draw two more chords to our points A and C. And this angle inside is also going to be alpha. We can do this again. Say we draw another one up here. Say this is F. And then two more chords here and here. And again, this angle is alpha. So that's pretty cool. Then if we move over, there's another interesting thing that we can talk about, and that is the fact that if we have an angle here that is a central angle that is 180 degrees, then regardless of where we put our inscribed angle over here, and we can draw two chords from our point to A and B, then this inscribed angle is always going to have an angle of 90. So we can try that again. Let's put another one here. Draw a line, draw a line. And again, this is always going to be 90. So that's a kind of an interesting thing. And we'll actually dive into some proofs and some uh, practice problems here in the next. To start off, we're going to look at a proof for the inscribed angle theorem. In this case, we're given a circle, and we're told that AC this line here is the diameter, and then we're given two angles, beta and alpha. What we need to prove is that beta is equal to 2 alpha, and that will prove that the inscribed angle theorem is true. So to start off, we're going to label this length and this length as r. Since O is the center, both of these lines are going to be the radius, and they're going to have the same length. Then we know in a triangle that if we have two lengths that are the same, then the angles that they are across from are the same. So we're going to say that this angle is alpha. The last thing we know is that this is a straight line. So let's call this angle here too many lines. Let's call this angle x. We know that beta plus x is equal to 180. Now we can write out another little equation here. x plus alpha plus alpha is equal to 180, since we know that the sum of all angles inside of a triangle is 180. 
So now what we can do, we'll solve for x here. x equals 180 minus 2 alpha. And then let's plug it into this part. So beta plus 180 minus 2 alpha is equal to 180. And then we can, let's see, subtract 180 here, subtract 180 here, those cancel. And then we'll add 2 alpha. And finally, what we get is beta is equal to 2 alpha. So now we're going to prove the inscribed angle theorem a different way. So now we're given a circle with center O, and again, points A, B, and C along the outside. We have our inscribed angle alpha here, and then our central angle beta here. We're also told, told that the diameter of the circle bisects both of these angles, so we can label some stuff. This is going to be one half of alpha on this side, and say this is going to be one half of beta. We also know that this length is r, and so is this one, because they are the radius of the circle. And like we did last time, we know that if the side lengths across from two angles are equal, then those angles are also equal. So this is going to be 1 half of alpha. I'm going to clean up some of this. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to label this angle as x. And from here, we kind of just proceed as we did in the last proof. So first we're going to find the internal sum. Well, we know the internal sum of this triangle is 180 degrees. So let's write out a little equation here. 1 half of alpha plus 1 half alpha plus x is equal to 180 degrees. And then we know that this line, full line here, is equal to 180 degrees. So we can write out another formula, which is going to be x plus 1 half of beta is equal to 180 degrees. And then we, we just solve for this. So we're going to solve for x. x is equal to 180 minus half of beta. We'll plug it in here. And that, in doing so, we're going to combine these. This is going to be alpha plus 180 minus half of beta equals 180. Subtract the 180 here, cancel, cancel, subtract it here. We're going to have 0 left over, so alpha minus 1 half beta equals 0. And then we'll add the half beta across. So alpha is equal to half of beta. And that is, again, the inscription. Finally, we're going to run through some practice problems to use the inscribed angle theorem. This problem asks us to find the measure of angle PQR. So we're going to label that on our plot here. It's going to be PQR. This is going to be alpha. Then we can also label the central angle, since we know that a central angle is formed if the vertex is the center of the circle. And we're given this little 90 degree symbol here. So beta is equal to 90 degrees. Then the inscribed angle theorem says that alpha is equal to one half of beta so we really just plug in our value here one half of 90 degrees and alpha is equal to 45 degrees all right let's look at one more this one looks a little trickier but it's really not we're asked to find the angle lpn so again we'll first label it here for this problem we don't need the central angle so if i drew it out like this that's where it would be, but we don't need it to solve this problem. In this case, we need to know that this is the intercepted arc. And any two inscribed angles that share the same intercepted arc are going to be equal. So this is 55 degrees. It has this arc here. So it's equal to LPN. So angle LPN equals 55 degrees. 